Hi, Rebecca here from Daily Wonder. Today I wanted to address the question that we received about how to plan a day for a kindergarten age child. So although many of you know that at this time Daily Wonder does not include a kindergarten package specifically, I can assure you that Jennifer and I had lots of experience working with that age group and in the kindergarten classroom. So let me just start off by saying what's really important about this age even between age three and six is that children are working through imitation. That's their primary lens of learning is through imitation. And not only do they imitate all the human beings and every single thing we do, but they are also taking in the entire world through Im and imitating the world. So even the rocks, the way the plants grow and respond to the sun, the way the animals move and the, the sounds of the animals, and of course, everything that humans do. So they're really taking it in and observing the world and then playing it out in an attempt to identify who they are and their role, role in the environment. That's something really important to keep in mind. So when we're planning for the kindergarten age child or even earlier, as I said, three to six, we wanna think about creating really a healthy home environment. Even in a brick and mortar school, we wanna be planning to create a healthy home environment. And what does that look like? Well, there's a few key ingredients in a healthy home environment. We want to have a very healthy rhythm. And so that might look like Monday is washing day, Tuesday is baking day, Wednesday is soup day, whatever you can imagine, but keeping that the same week after week after week. And by creating a very healthy rhythm through the week, but also through the day, what you create are these pillars of safety for your child so that they can uh, take in all those impressions about the world, but they can depend on those healthy rhythms to keep them safe, to keep them comfortable. They rely on those as placeholders throughout the day that they can kind of lean on and bounce against as they go out and with their courage and uncover the world. So a healthy rhythm is key. Another really important ingredient for this age group is uh, lots of opportunity for open-ended creative play. And that can be inside or outside. Another important factor is surrounding your child with stories, whether that is reading them stories or telling them stories, but lots of opportunity to hear stories. And lastly, what's really important is for your child to have artistic opportunities. And that's gonna be different for every family, but things like watercolor painting, modeling with beeswax or clay or even mud, having things like fibers around them so that they can finger knit or card wool or whatever it is that works for your family, having lots of artistic opportunities. So those are some key ingredients. And then some benefits, if you can pull it off, are creating reverence for nature, and you can do that through a recognition of what's happening outside reflected on a nature table inside, bringing some shells in from, from the beach in summer or some pine cones in the fall and what, whatever is appropriate for your where you're living, laying them on a silk, having a, a candle on the table and just building a reverence for what's happening in nature. And that can tie into any celebrations or festivals that your family celebrates. Um, as well and building that reverence for those festivals and celebrations as well. And another important piece for you to consider is singing. And not all of us are natural singers, myself included, but even if you hum a song that you know, remember from your own schooling or from your own uh, spiritual background or for your, from your own community background, humming a song, singing a song can be a great starting place, but bringing in singing builds not only um, a sense of rhythm um, and comfort for your child, but it also develops vocabulary and um, a sense of language. So that's another important piece for your child. So now when we think about the age of five or six, that kindergarten child age, what are some things that we can bring into the homeschooling day that will meet the needs of that child? So let's get into that a little bit. For the five, six-year-old who's in that kindergarten age, you're just dialing it up a little bit. The same thing you did for your child at three, you're just going to make it a little more complex, a little more responsibility, a little more challenging. So you could include longer stories that may take a day or two to tell the entire story. And then following a story, such as a long story like that, have the child reflect on it with you. 
What are, why did that character make that choice? What do you think she felt in that moment? And have them reflect that learning in some artistic way, whether that's drawing a picture that stood out for them into a book or a watercolor painting, a picture from the story, or modeling one of the characters out of beeswax or clay, or um, choosing some colors of just bits and bobs to paste onto a page that made them think of the story. Whatever that looks like for you can be a way to just kind of make it a little more complex and interesting for the five or six year old. You will also want to give them more responsibility, whether that is caring for pets, caring for the garden outside, participating in food preparation in the kitchen, taking on some chores around the house, just giving them a little more responsibility and having a chore wheel to reflect that responsibility. You could have them do more complex handcrafts. So if they have started to finger knit, you could have them build a placemat which includes sewing the finger knitting into a coil, for example. You could have them do more complex modeling with their beeswax or their clay. Maybe they use several colors or different pieces and they're putting them together to create a scene. You could have them do some nature activities like build a bird feeder or create collections from outside. And then you can take any of those activities and incorporate counting. So for example, you could um, take up skipping, or you could use those nature items that are part of a collection to do some counting and sorting and work with patterns. You can also use your storytelling to work with vocabulary and uh, alliteration and things like the rhyming that your children might notice at that stage. And then uh, wherever your child is at with reading and writing, you know, you can introduce that um, as a follow-up to the pictures that they draw or paint after listening to a story. You could play games with a five and six year old and you'll wanna to stick to sequential games where something happens and then you do the next thing and then you do the next thing and the next thing. That's a much better and age appropriate game than the critical thinking games of if this, then this. They're not quite ready for those kinds of games yet. Um, you want to make sure that the five and six year old has lots of opportunities to do some climbing, to do some building, to do some digging and some heavy outdoor work if possible, lifting boards and logs and stumps, those kinds of things, climbing high up the tree, getting down from the tree, playing at the park with all of the equipment. Um, those are really important opportunities for your child as well. You'll want to um, make sure that you are honoring your child's school day with a beginning and an ending. Just as we encourage parents who are working with grade school age children, we want to open the day and close the day with either a song or a verse. And it can be made up in the spot, but repeated each day so that your child knows this is my work today and this is when my work ends. And there are endless possibilities for children and there are probably endless videos that I could make about the specifics of each of those things I talked about. But I hope that gives a little bit of an indication of how you could support your three to six year old in a homeschooling environment. Wish you well, we'd love to hear how it goes for you. Thanks so much, bye for now.